So there's a bit of chatter online regarding the 24 hour sun in Antarctica. Well, the flat earthers are never going to understand it unless they know the flat earth system. And I'm the only one showing the, whole, the entire flat earth system. It's a dual system. You could take that as the northern hemisphere, everything comes out of the centre Arctic, right out of the tropical zone of Cancer. Then you have the tropical gap. And then there's another rotation on a meridian, which is the meridian you're standing on. This is what you see. But this meridian line comes out of the north it's because it's mirrored. Everything is mirrored from the north. You could be anywhere around this perimeter outside here in the southern hemisphere with your own arc of horizon. Everything turning around you. You've got to understand there's 66.6 .6 degrees to the Tropic of Cancer. Then there's 46.6 eight degrees between the tropics over here and there's another 66.6 .6 degrees to the so-called south pole they tell you it's online that is mirrored to there that is mirrored to there i should say so polaris is polaris australis arctic antarctic but it's not a South Pole. They tell you it's the South Pole. They tell you the Arctic's the North Pole, and that's the South Pole. That's a total lie. That ruins their globe model by, by, by revealing this lie. That's the North Pole. They are both North Poles. They're both Arctics. They're both the same. There's an Arctic and an anti-Arctic. There's a strong force and a weak force, but there's a ratio difference. This is a two to three ratio. I've drawn them equal here. You've got to understand that, that these are both North Poles and these are the South Poles here, either sides of the tropics. It's just like this. Two South. That's why we get a tropical gap. Or just two magnets like this. That's why we keep it that's why we have the tropical gap. It's like two magnets. You've got a, a north and a south, and a south and a north. Prove me wrong. A dip compass dips at both Arctics, which means the field rises from both Arctics. The dip compass will point up either side of the tropics. Science tells you the magnetic field is weakest at the equator. They fail to tell you that the magnetic field of Earth does not even cross the tropics. It only goes to there and drops straight down to the ground, then through the ground and rises up here. Comes up over to Cancer, drops to the ground, through the ground, and rises up here. So, if you, so imagine these are two star rotations, not the Earth. The Earth's below it, yeah. But you're getting a bit complicated if I start explaining all that now, but... This is the magnetic field that comes out of the centre north. It's called the spider web and celestial navigation. They all know about it. Well, it's mirrored out here, but it's inverted. It's inside out due to the, the concaved, the, the curving magnetic field of the southern hemisphere. So if you took these two flat planes and put them up on their edge and then sliced down from the top, a slice through it all, it'd look like those that there. It's the flat northern hemisphere, and the stars are up here in the night sky, are parabolic, parabolically projected into the south, where they get cast back to the observer in another rotation here. But they're inside out compared to these. That's what a parabolic mirror does. Same stars as the north, but they're inside out. There's the tropical gap. That's where the Earth's energy field is created between the two tropics. Magnetic induction, capacitance. When the sun comes around the tropics, around the earth every day, wherever the sun is, the magnetic field 
just spins around the image of the sun, because it's not the true sun, spins around that spot where the energy is being created and then feeds that energy back over to the real plasma sun, unseen plasma sun, locked in this magnetic field in the north. This Earth's flux magnetically locks creation in the centre here. We do not see it and cannot get to it. We all exist out here. Southern Hemisphere, Tropical Region, Northern Hemisphere. Centre Arctic, Northern Hemisphere, Tropic, Southern Hemisphere. When you come down here, there's the tropical gap. Centre North is in there, smaller. More widely dispersed out here in the south. Everything expands out from the north. Humans can't figure that out, can't understand that, can't comprehend it. But everything that moves south expands with the field. So every arc of longitude is equally spaced there as it is back here. Because you've expanded with it, so it's all relative to the observer. So nothing's really expanded. This is why they bring it all back to the another pole in the globe model. The globe is just a, a model. Just like the Gleason map is just a, a, is a one image of its layout, and then you can relate it to the Mercator map, which is another image. You have to you have to work them all, use them all together. The globe gives you an idea of where all the continents are on this ball, but you don't live on the ball. Just like you don't live on a Gleason map or a Mercator map. It's like a Gleason map, you know, it, it arches out like this, arcs out like this, expands out. So you work on longer arcs of longitude as to where you are around the Earth. Then you come up to a, a Mercator map, and all the um, arcs of longitude, oh look, they're all parallel. Because you're equally expanding with the arcs relative to the observer, so time over distance is all equal, no matter where, which latitude. Okay? Between the tropics is a little bit different, because there's no magnetic field crossing the tropics. Whether that alters the uh, the time over distance or not, I don't know, don't know but they haven't, they haven't drawn it here on the Mercator map. But a slight difference there. So anyway, um, back to here. Understanding um, how the seasons change. Uh, it's, it's a magnetic flux. So you, you take your ring magnet, it's got a magnetic flux over it. Well, it expands and contracts. It's a vortex. Just like your heart is an S-curve like this. It flexes up and down, in and out. So the field will come up to the centre north and go down and out around the south, southern hemisphere. This is what the uh, magnetic field does over the year. This is down and out for the December solstice, where the sun goes all the way around the southern perimeter. Stays out there and works its way back up again all, to, all the way to the June solstice. So you put, the, put this over the top of your northern hemisphere, or the whole earth actually, so north in the centre, the Antarctic all around here, and, and flex it up and down, up and down like a, like a jellyfish or something, because it's flexing with the ecliptic plane. So you could come over here. This is the northern hemisphere, the first state, because the southern's all mirrored, and it moves all the way around the centre north, because as this north turns, it mirrors the protection all the way around, right? I mean, I've drawn these three circles, but there's a lot more there. Infinite, because they all flow around the north. That's how it works in magnetism. It's all magnetism. Magic, magnetism. We come from that zone here, which is magic. Mag magnetic 3D depth. It's come from this 2D plane of projection. It's projected, this depth. It's not really there. We come from there. Magic, magnetism. So if you took this ecliptic plane, just lay it over the, the field here, this is what you've got. All the, all the, the uh, planets out here on their paths. Right in the centre is the black hole. Black hole centre down in here, it's the gurgler. Right on its horizon there is the real sun. The real plasma sun that moves around the horizon of the black hole. 
It's a 24-7. 360 degrees for a 24-hour day. It projects its energy across the black hole out into our realm, the magnetic field. The sun follows the magnetic field. So the sun could be seen anywhere around on this field at that particular minute in time. You can say that's one o'clock, everybody is going to see it all the way around that line. Or two o'clock, everyone's going to see it around that line. Or three o'clock, everyone's going to see it around that line. In the, in the Northern Hemisphere. Because then it gets mirrored into the Southern Hemisphere. It's all working around here. But as that swings around this way, the Southern Hemisphere is swinging around this way. Yes, there's two, two suns, one in each hemisphere. But then there's also the one being created where the energy is. It's a big story. It's a long story. But just imagine there's one coming out of the north, for the north, mirrored to the south. There's one in the south. Then on top of that, every man sees his own image of a sun. That's what the ancient Egyptians stated. The sun is in many places, but only seen in one. One man, one image. So you've got to realise, it's a, it's a dual system. Earth is a dual system, male and female, day and night, up, down, you name it. But it's a two to three ratio. And there's a time of the year where there's an overlay. The field comes, moves north and overlays and creates this equilibrium. And that's to do with the equinox. It's from here to there. This is a divine period. Equinox is there, but this crossover, the sun's and lemma from there to there. There's some magic going on. It's where the field becomes equal, balanced. You know the Egyptians with the with the old scales there? Anubis holding the scales? Because man can, is balanced this time of the year as well. It's early spring. Earth is balanced. So does man become balanced consciously and can be illuminated, can be God-like, born again, the whole Jesus story. The Bible is a physics book. Okay? But no one understands it, do they? Because they haven't been woken up. They've never been taught all the secrets to understand how you can get woken up. See, this is how the season changes. This is all shown in the pyramids. That's what the pyramids are all about. Look, stepping up, stepping up all the way to the northern hemisphere. Coming back down to down and out. Place those over these. You start understanding how the fl magnetic field flux fluctuates and why you get 24 our sun above the horizon around the Antarctica during the December solstice. 66 degrees here, you'll only see the sun above the horizon for one day. But the, the further, look, you've got 66 degrees, you've got to go all the way to 90 degrees. You'll see it above the horizon for days out here before it starts moving back, back up and in, all the way back to the north. Back up and in. Back up and in. Turning around here. Was it turning around out here? 24 hour sun. It's a no brainer. Once you understand the flat earth model, there's no turning back. It all makes sense. It's all verifiable. A dip compass dips at both Arctics, which proves they're both North Poles. They've been lying to you all along. And it points up at these two regions here. Those are the south poles of the earth. Just like this. Or that. One rotates all the way around the other. North is fixed. This is why we know that the stars are imperishable in the north. They don't go anywhere. But the southern ones do. Because when this come, moves up and in, these stars here just start disappearing. Underneath the field here. Okay? While we're here, understand what the firmament is. The firmament isn't a dome over the whole flat earth. That's the firmament, which is the Milky Way. It's a firm set of stars passing through the sky. This is the ark. This is the, the um, solar boat, because the boat, the sun's in it. Look, that's Rakia. Rakia is the firmament. And it's when the two, uh, two, two Milky Ways of each hemisphere line up. One comes out of here, there's one, and there's the mirrored, mirrored one over here. Particular time of the year, 
they marry. And there's a sun that creates all the energy between the tropics. And, and they, they, they form this arch. It's the Golden Bridge. Look at Michael, um, Leonardo da Vinci's uh, Mona Lisa painting. It's in the background on the right there. It's the Golden Bridge. He knew all about it. The arches. Four arches. He's also got a rat drawn in there. Rat. Rat. Ararat. Mount. Uh, sun rests on Mount Ararat. Ra. Sun. Rat. T. Rat. Rat. Leonardo da Vinci knew it all. Just like I know it all. But don't tell anybody. Okay? The divine secrets. Understanding a magnetic cycle. That's what a magnetic cycle looks like. All hidden from you. See, it comes up, spins around the north, shoots back out around the south. But these are infinite, centralised on this spot here in the north. So all these shapes are, are spun all the way around here. If, if you take that as the whole earth, the ring magnet, the whole ring magnet. It'll loop out of here, around to the south, back up and in. Then it spins around, comes right out to the south, back in and around. Out in the south, back in around the centre, back out around the south, back in around the centre, back out around the south, back in around north, back out around south, back in around north. Infinite, infinite. You could say every one of these lines represents one. Over and in, down and out. Changing magnetic field. Changes here. Where the field crosses over the tropics. Nothing, no, sorry, it doesn't tr cross the tropics. It changes where it comes over here shoots down here and goes through the ground because it can't get across there, two south poles. Comes over here, shoots down to the ground, along the ground thou shalt go, up and over the field, down along the ground thou shalt go. Physics book, the Bible, told you all about it. Hey, thanks for watching. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Here's a model here too, how it works. Centre north, fixed, as it turns. Doesn't go anywhere, but it turns. Look, all the southern field turns with it. But they actually move all the way around. So you can imagine, just take one and then move it all the way around. As this turns, as this turns, as this, as this is turning, it turns one full rotation as it goes all the way around. Because it's mirrored off the centre, isn't it? 